Similara isn't very intuitive to use. Uh, I've seen what these people who say it's not intuitive to use recommend, and <laughs> are you kidding me? Uh, if you are from, don't let it put you off. If you're familiar with Pinnacle Studio, or you've worked with Windows Movie Maker, or you know any of the hundred clones out there, those softwares, um, you're going to be familiar with this interface. Uh, I find it very intuitive. So why do you want to go through all this for it? Um, it's a great piece of software. It does as much or as little as you want. You can do drag and drop editing, throw in a few fades, transitions, and you've got yourself a nice little family video. Or, and I have uh, figured out watching some of the Adobe After Effects tutorials, um, even some of the advanced stuff, short of you know, free modern particle generation, which you need another piece of software for, that, uh, Similar, I can do most of that stuff. Um, and I'm planning on showing you how to do it as I learn how to do it. So if you have any uh, suggestions for stuff you would like to see tutorials on, uh, leave a comment, let me know. I'll see if I can get to it. So, um, that's why you want it. Uh, you want to install it from source because when you do that, uh, it's going to be customized to your distribution and your machine. And you're going to end up with better stability, more features, and better performance. Uh, for example, OpenGL uh, support is only available in packages for uh, Ubuntu 8 Hardy Heron. When I was installing for FreeSpire, uh, I had to use an older Debian uh, to get it installed. I had to force it to install. And as far as performance, uh, I didn't know what I was missing. I was only getting two frames per second and any of the preview windows, and it really got congested. I installed from source, and all of a sudden, even without OpenGL, I was getting full frame rates, and I also found out I was missing steroids for the uh, green screen effects. It's just really, uh, really incredible. And like I said, you know, it's a lot cheaper than Sony Vegas or Adobe After Effects. Uh, there's two different flavors out there. There's one from the original people who brought us, Cinelera, and they're up to version 4 right now. It was just released. And they're over at uh, TarotMorrior.com, TarotMorrior Limited. Uh, a lot of people will direct you to use the community version, or Cinelera CV, at Cinelera.org. That's the version I'm going to gauge this tutorial for, because that's the version I use. Um, it's more stable. It's got bug fixes that come out more regularly. It even has some custom features. Is it really more stable? You know, I can't really say. I haven't used the regular Heroin Warrior version of Cinelera. And uh, don't worry about this. Installation is actually pretty easy. Uh, and for the most part, it's just cut and paste. So let's get over to our virtual room and get started. It is so neat to be able to beam yourself places. So let's get started. Bring the desktop up there right away. And, uh, like I said, this is pretty much just cut and paste into a command line and you're good to go. You can also cut and paste into your package manager. You know, six of one, half a dozen of another. Uh, the install guide was originally brought to us by Placido Andre Souza. Here's a link to his, his uh, website. Uh, I'm going to put it over there. And I updated it for FreeSpire 2, which is basically a good to feisty. Here's mine. I'm going to put a link over there. And uh, let's bring up Firefox and go over to his page. 
All okay. right. Um, it's worth checking out his page uh, just to see, you know, what he has there. Uh, plus, if you take a look here, let's go to like uh, step eight. Look at this bit right here. There. Um, basically, you substitute that file name, and you have got what you need. The command line save somewhere to um, open up and get ready to install any. Uh, R.GZ format. Then if we go down here to uh, step 17, and uh, this bit right here. Easy too. Uh, I, I have used this as reference to install a couple of pieces of software since, and you know, it's great to be able to do that. Let's go over to uh, my page, and here we have it. Uh, now, you're going to notice some differences between mine and his. For instance, step 17, uh, his says to install X264 from source, but the source is not that link. Now, I found this is going to help you for all of your installations, too. Uh, there's a great way to find out what you need. For instance, okay, X264 is what we need. So we're going to go over here to a uh, web, a uh, Google, and we're going to plug in distribution, release, or package, and the package that you need. So for me, it's going to be uh, Ubuntu because it's Ubuntu based, ISTE, package, and X264. The very first thing that's going to come up in your Google search, or very nearly the first thing, is going to be what you need. It's going to be a link to the repositories, details, and package. So here we got Ubuntu details of source package, X264, and FISTE. Down a little bit, and we see that the details are uh, source package libx264 dev and x264.in. So we're going to either type those two in the Synaptic Package Manager or sudo apt get install libx264 dev or x264 bin. That's going to get you through this if you come up to anything that's not in mine or that is in mine and doesn't work. You want to make sure to hit all of these, even if you think you have the package. Worst that's going to happen is it's going to update you. Um, or it's going to tell you that you already have it and it's already up to date. So, don't worry about that. But you are going to need to do everyone. A couple packages I thought I had I didn't, and it didn't work. Um, so, uh, one that I know of offhand as uh, step 10 was LIB MJPEG Tools 0. You do the little search thing and you end up getting it. It's uh, LIB MJPEG Tools 0 C2A, and that's what you need to install. So keep all this in mind.